to talk a little bit more about that Alawi. Thank you, Dom. Yes, I am here with Quas, the Alawi main himself, uh, also player of the game. Congratulations on that and getting the victory for your team. Uh, now, first off, I want to ask you a question about, you know, you uh, when you left uh, Team Liquid, uh, in between the time where you joined Energy, how much league were you playing? How involved in the competitive scene were you staying? You know, how'd you keep your practice up? So I took a break for a couple months with no league. And then um, I kept track of the competitive scene um, Spring Split. And that's kind of also a reason that motivated me to go back at it. I just was watching the matches and I just got hyped up to play again. Um, so eventually um, started playing more solo queue and solo queue. And then I got uh, the opportunity from Energy. And then I just took it. How quickly were you able to shake off the rust of uh, competitive games, you know, in scrims and stuff like that? Uh, I'm not going to lie. I was dying a lot to me once when I um, started playing again. But it took me like a week or two to get accustomed to it again and the team. Um, still think I have a lot of stuff to get back at. Um, definitely not at my top, at my best right now. Um, I think it's going to take more, more games with the team and more games overall to get back at it. We well, look good here today on the Alawi, and I gotta ask you an Alawi question because I've really been liking the champion, uh, and I was hoping you pull her out yesterday, um, but you know you were facing Aurelia early picks and stuff like that. Uh, but I gotta say, what is the single most frustrating thing as an Alawi player that you've run into so far? What's the most frustrating thing to play against as Alawi? Most frustrating thing is to play um, against really fast characters because Alawi is really slow, uh, but she hits hard. But if you're playing against an Echo or something that's really quick, uh, you're never going to hit him. So uh, you have to be really careful to what you pick it into. And I think she is uh, really strong into certain stuff. Um, yeah. Definitely agree. All right, my final question is going to be about the team. You know, there's a new squad that you guys uh, came together uh, very recently. So what is the main thing you guys are looking to improve on, you know, after this week, heading into week three as a team? You know, what's the goal in practice? So I think um, I've been really liking what we're doing in practice. Um, just more focused, more focused on communication and just shot calling and um, getting everyone on the same page, which is hard with um, two people who don't speak much English. Um, it's going to be uh, slow, slowly to, to improve, but I think we're, we made so much progress since our first match. Um, I'm really happy how the team uh, is shaping up and can't wait to be the best we can be. Definitely agree. A lot of progress, even from week one to week two. Congratulations once again. Now we are going to send it over to Dash at the analyst desk. Thank you very much, Kobe, there with Quas, our player of the game, putting up a pretty solid performance, one might say, 4-0 and 2 on the Alawi. Uh, we were looking for him to kind of show up eventually. A lot of us were pointing at the Swain, saying, well, he was always known as a Swain, uh, you know, a Swain player. Since Swain is now a champion that's playable in the LCS, we're expecting him to pull it out. But Alawi's the ticket. That's the one that kind of finally puts him up uh, where we would expect him to be as a dominant top. I do not want to see more Maokai from him. I want to see those six games of all Alawi, just nonstop, because that was really fun to watch, entertaining, and it caught Echo Fox off guard. They had no idea what to do. We had so many random tentacle kills, which honestly are so much fun to watch. Just watching this champion work and, and play out team fights and even just the laning phase. I mean, there's definitely something to be said for the fact that uh, most of these teams probably have very little experience playing against these cha this champion, and we and we saw it multiple times with, with uh, late tentacle kills because people aren't paying attention to the marks. Yeah, I mean, I think this was the best thing to happen to Energy was to have Echo Fox take the Maokai away early and finally Quas is like, yes, counterpick it. <laughs> With right. my Alawi, and you see just how much work he can put in. Even in team situations, not just in lane. Like, he, he lands these really unexpected um, pulls. The vessels finally proc. And then, obviously, Fox has no idea how to play against this. They kept right. getting killed. Sometimes they would group up on the vessel, and that killed Keith once. And it's it's very clear that they don't have a lot of experience. I don't think anyone has a lot of experience playing against Alawi in a team setting. So it's really kind of hard to fault Fox. Right. But at the same time, you would have liked to have seen a little bit more comfortability against it. But I think you can, you know, on the flip side of that, we, again, giving commendations to Quas, you can very much tell that he's put a lot of time in on this champion because he's landing those tentacles as well as the spirit grabs, you know, pretty consistently, which is not easy to do. That takes time and effort. Just more than anything, takes a lot of time invested into the champion to understand that, that. That was really curious was the build that he went for. First item, Death Dance. We're like, okay, Death Dance, he wants to dominate the laning phase into Spirit Visage, into the Sterex gauge. So obviously it's just a really tanky Alawi that's supposed to dish out damage and just 
regen itself through mm -hmm. the damage from the tentacles. And when you combo that with the Karma shield, it's really annoying to try to get through that Alawi when she also has the Nidalee heals to, to keep her alive. And we saw just how devastating the team fights are from this champion. I mean, it, it's just tentacles from all directions. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> now let's expand, though, the conversation to the entirety of Champion Select because Alawi wasn't the only somewhat strange pick that we saw grabbed up by energy. We had that vein behind it as well as the zigs in the mid lane. I mean, it's not like we've never seen those champions played in the LCS, but not for some time. And I don't think anybody would consider them S tier champions in the meta currently. And yet energy pulls out a win, putting together a composition like that. I think they benefited from the uh, uh, Echo Fox's lack of familiarity with the Alawi. I think that Alawi can work in other team comps. I don't think you need to make one this weird where you have <laughs> like a Ziggs and Vayne with it. Like you could probably substitute a Lucian and an Anivia or like another, another wave clear mid in there and be fine. I don't think it has to be this weird. Um, but, you know, what works is, you know, what works. So if Energy's comfortable with this, then they should probably stick with it. Yeah, so ultimately, Energy coming up with a victory. At the beginning of the day, you said for the teams that are 02, you're look, or, or, or 03, uh, you're looking to see market improvement regardless of the results. Now, they do pick up the victory here against Echo Fox, but did we see what we wanted to from Energy in terms of moving in the right direction? The final game, absolutely. Okay. Yeah, first game, we still saw the same concerns where they, they were stalling out, they weren't getting much done, they like forced a Baron super hard that easily could have lost in the game as opposed to let them stay in it. Um, but the second game, when they finally got off like what was seeming to be their standard comp and picks, we finally <laughs> saw some improvement. So I think maybe um, they just need to branch out a little bit more. They've been spamming the Maokai, hasn't been working, and I think maybe it's time to stay away from it for a little bit. Right, yeah, very much, as you mentioned, like to see him on those bruisers a little bit more of the playmakers as champs like graphic pops up here. We do get to see what Echo Fox crafted. Much more of a standard team composition in the given meta, but... Uh, as a final point, what is your guys' assessment of this roster as they do uh, go down 0-2 in this uh, in this series? Game one, though, tremendously close. Well, I thought that for the second game, it was a little bit easy for them to decide what to do, just because obviously the lack of familiarity against Elawi, as well as winning matchups everywhere. You know, Ziggs is the kind of champion that's just going to stall out the game, so it gives Echo Fox very little opportunities, and they're clearly struggling on the sideways, which makes the game really easy as a point of just pushing all three lanes and then just grouping up. It's like, hey, we're winning all the lanes, and now they have no idea how to respond to our champion. So that kind of unfamiliarity is something that I'd like for them to a little bit, you know, other teams pick up on it, and we'll see how it can energy actually win when they're against a team that knows what they're trying to do. Yeah, Quas and the organization will be very happy to have picked up that victory today, get themselves on the board. That's going to do it for the Energy and Fox series over here on NALCS 2. Over on NALCS 1, we got Team Liquid and CLG in Game 3 of their series. CLG up 6-1 in kills 20-ish minutes into the game with a 3K gold lead. Things seem to be he heating up, rather, so we're going to take a live look in on that game and see how it plays out. Deep as always. Yeah, that is... Very well executed by Team Liquid and some questionable execution by CLG. The Ash Arrow was exactly the way Team Liquid needed to engage that. And Piglet was rightfully very patient with his usage because he knew there's so many targets that he really just can't hit. Everyone can avoid it pretty much except for Stixay. So he fires this in from Fog of War, giving a little time to react and bullseyes on a Stixay. Notice Matt also changed his CC. Afteru then moves forward to try and disrupt them, but he actually alts very late. He should have been ulting to prevent that damage so he could stay under the turret. Then he tries to initiate on the switchies, knowing the tank is around the back side, uh, but it's just not going to work. And Darduk is able to pick up two kills and then very smartly flashes away from Lee's piercing arrow, which could have killed him. And then in the century of 3v5, I was very surprised to see COD trying to go in to turn this one around. Team Liquid can just back away, and COD doesn't get anything off the turret yet. Well. TL with great work done there. Actually not quite equalizing the goal just yet, but certainly have control of this particular stage of the game. Baron is the next target, it's Smithy Arrows! Propella, Jack down, Phoenix gonna chase, that should be enough, but Smithy still taking fire, Lolo locks him up, and there's the shutdown. And it was Baron Threat that created that. COG took such tremendous losses and then extended the fight beyond that point that x was really scared they were gonna be taking Baron, and again, Piglet's Ash Arrow was right off cooldown, that's High accuracy. I mean, he actually got the Darshan kill earlier on in the game, which is that's three kills generated just because of Piglet's Ash Arrow. 
Of course, Team Liquid making me a liar right as we jump in there. They even up the gold lead with that double kill as well as the mid turret take. But that just makes this game all that much more exciting as the gold's evened up moving into these later stages of the game. Yeah, I mean, TL has no chill. I mean, what team down like <laughs> was zero to six in kills or whatever it was, one to six, yeah. would like group up in siege mid and then get an effective fight off and, and start evening the game up. They, they're a team that's extremely aggressive and it leads to quick wins and quick losses, which is how this series has gone so far. Yeah. Finally, they're clashing head on and we're actually able to see them keep up with CLG and have a competitive game instead of one team just getting stomped that's what I was off the say. back of Piglet's arrows. And that's how I'm actually expecting this game to be closed out. They're either win by the arrows or lose by them. Yeah, in what was two very one-sided games leading up to game three, it looks to be very close over there on NALCS1. So go check it out if you want to see how that series ends. We're hitting B and heading back to base to buy some items, but don't despair. The LCS will be back in lane soon with a match between TSM and Apex. We'll see you soon. I'll give you the, uh, the day, Lord. We're not here to be friends with these people. We're here to crush them. Yeah. More head on items. They could look for a dive here. Can't oh he my gosh. Oh my, he's gonna go down. Quaz gets first blood with the test of spirit. Oh man, he gets over the wall. But the stun lands. Oh, Froggen is gonna get the kill on GBM. He is a vessel right now. He's gonna have to dodge it. Quaz gets it over the wall. And they might be looking to end with the game the with the next wave. I think they can end. And Quas takes another one. This guy is going off on Alawi. And Energy pick up their first win of the 2016 Summer Split off the back of Quas.